This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Hey, do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Or do you have an already existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? Well, check out WeKnowPodcasting.com. From concept development to theme music to editing to logos, WeKnowPodcasting.com is a one-stop shop for all things pod. Don't hesitate to hit us up. We're very nice. We did 50 of these. <laughs> Dude, 50 episodes. And I'm not tired of Christmas yet. Are you Are you sick of Christmas yet? Not yet. Did you see the link that I shared from Seth Meyers on our Facebook page? I did see the link that you shared from Seth Meyers on our <laughs> Facebook page. So I saw it the other day when you had posted it. And I didn't end up watching it until this morning. And I was like, wow, that is matt and i (laughs) anybody that listened to uh last week's episode heard both of us say we're 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 done with the halloween season by the time it gets to halloween we're both done with the halloween season and halloween at least the day after is christmas yeah i was like did we write this song and forgot it was just (laughs) it was so funny because it came onto your radar literally the day after we recorded. That's when it aired. So it's it's pretty funny. But Matt, we are in in the midst of Christmas. It's November 1st, buddy. Yeah, it is. It's, it's finally it's here. It's finally Woo! here. We went back and forth on a bunch of different ideas. At one point, it was like, maybe we'll just keep it short. Like, there's so many things that we could do for episode 50 that we can't pick one. So we'll just do nothing. Yeah. That seemed like a dumb idea. Then I was like, oh, of course, we'll do a best of episode until I was like, yeah, it's going to come out in a week and I'm very busy and I don't know if I'm going to be able to comb through 40 episodes, find the best moments, pull all of those clips and assemble them together in in that time frame. And then what ended up happening was I was like, we'll do the clip show. I'm just going to listen to everything over the next three days. And I was listening to our live stream Things that you hate about Christmas. Yeah. And for like the millionth time, the Emmett Otter versus Charlie <laughs> Brown debate came up. And I said, you know what? We need to settle this once and for all. So on Instagram and on Facebook, I posted a poll and I just said, what is the better Christmas special, Emmett Otter or Charlie Brown Christmas? I did what you asked me to do. For those of you listening, Matt asked me to not look at the results. So I popped on real quick made my vote, and then unfollowed like anything connected to the polls. I don't know if you've listened to the latest Jersey Ghouls, but I did ask them their opinion because I knew that this question was coming. It was Mm -hmm. unanimous. Charlie Brown Christmas. Well, Yeah, go ahead, buddy. The Jersey Ghouls vote similarly to the rest of the listening (laughs) audience. (laughs) Yes! Dude, you can't deny the staying power of the brown-headed child. I... 
actually have to really, I, I'm quite upset with one person in particular. Really? Um, so only one person commented with their reason for their vote. Okay. And it was my friend Lauren. Okay. And I, and I want to read this and then I'll explain why this upsets me so much. All right. She said, I love Jim Henson. Yeah. I'm currently too. watching the Muppets Haunted Mansion for about the zillionth time. It was great. But Emmett Otter is too slow and too sad. Thank you. Even if it does have a happy ending. I'd rather watch the behind the scenes of how it was created than the actual movie. Now, here's I, the thing. I can get behind that. Here's the thing. Okay. Lauren's son is named Emmett. She's the person that inter- introduced Emmett Otter <laughs> into my life. Oh, she like turned on you in the <laughs> yeah, last like, feel, minute. Yeah, I feel like I was like, all right, I might be losing this. But, ooh, Lauren commented, at least Lauren's probably got my back. And La- then, La- Lauren went all Billy Loomis on you. Oh, like my she God. Like, was... Oh, my God. She so, straight up turned her back on you, man. This is my state. I think that, honestly, what she just said about it being too slow and sad but does have a happy ending, yeah. honestly, that describes both specials. It does. It does like, describe both specials. But I think... What keeps me into Charlie Brown Christmas, and I don't, I can't deny the brilliance of Paul Williams that did yeah. the soundtrack for Emma Daughter. It's brilliant. But Vince Gallardi's soundtrack for Charlie Brown Christmas is absolutely timeless. And I get, so I think what hurts Emma Daughter. Yeah. in this poll and i should have known this i should have known that this was going to be the case too is that just way less people have also even heard of emmet otter yeah but i think and i said this before this is not that i that i dislike this is this is almost like <laughs> it's almost the reverse of your halloween kills thing okay. right like where you're like i'm not saying it's the greatest movie of all time I'm just saying that there's a lot of shit that's way worse that people have given the past to Yeah, is like, I'm not saying that Charlie Brown is the actually, you know what? It's even better comparable. My opinion of Charlie Brown is similar to your Hocus Pocus. Okay. Where it's like, All right. there are yeah. so many better specials in this galaxy that either got aired one time and never shown again, or haven't been on television for like two decades but like as a culture, we have like a Stockholm syndrome with this Charlie Brown special so much so that people are like not willing to admit that it is fairly outdated. It's extremely slow. It's kind of boring. Like, yes, the soundtrack is great. Put it on in your fucking car and listen to it while you're driving around. Don't interrupt what could be a perfectly good time slot for any other Christmas special with your Charlie Brown nonsense. I mean, the difference being between Hocus Pocus and Charlie Brown is Charlie Brown Christmas is aired once a year. (laughs) Once a year. Just like Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown was aired once. And the kids even said to me uh, yesterday, they were like, did you watch it? I'm like, no, I didn't even realize it was on. So that's the difference between that and Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus, I, somebody turn on Freeform because it's probably on right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually, you've been, listen, if there's anything that you've instilled in me, this is officially the first October and I don't know how long where I did not watch. At least I didn't actively put on Hocus Pocus. I maybe was at someone's yeah. house when it was on on the TV and I wasn't paying attention. But I did not once this October be like, all right, let's let's get Hocus Pocus on the TV and do some some Halloweeny shit. I was like, you know what? I don't need it this year. I don't so, need it this year. And that's how I'm starting to feel. I mean, here's the thing. I'm bitching all the time about the Charlie Brown Christmas. But you do, I, dude. You but, have like this hatred. Or, and not even it's not even a hatred because it's just like you said. Like I was defending Halloween Kills when that movie means nothing to me. That's what, Chris, that, Charlie Brown means nothing you, to me, but I hate that I feel obligated to watch you, it every year. And oh I do watch God. it every year. Like, I hate that I feel like I have to watch it. But it's so, it's not slow. It's 30 minutes. It's it's not that bad. It's not even 30 minutes. It's like 20 minutes, but it yeah. feels like it's an eternity Where when I'm Emmett watching Otter it. Where Otter is 48 minutes 
And it does feel like you're just being drug over broken glass, <laughs> butt naked. <laughs> like, I mean, that's what Emmett Otter feels like to me. The only, like, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'll take that back. <laughs> we, we, we have some, some pretty big fans of, of Emmett Otter. And I it's, think I've even said in the past that I need to give it another chance. And I think, like, I used to love the Charlie Brown Christmas special. I think I talked about this before that, like, yeah. the biggest problem that I have is probably my mom's forced fun of making us watch Charlie Brown Christmas every yeah. year. Where it's like, oh, it's the night that it's on. And I'm like, yeah, but like I was going to put on, you know, this thing. And she's like, nope, 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 Charlie Brown. And then she's like just sitting there. But then she's like barely paying attention. Like she's also like doing like 14 other things. And I'm like, all right, so we all shut off our lives so that you could put on Charlie Brown Christmas special and then I mean, barely watch it. I can get I can get with that, too, because I think you and I both have discussed our love of event television, but I think we both also hate event television yeah. as well. As soon as we're told we have to be watching this, all of a sudden you don't want to watch it anymore. And I think that's, that honestly brings us back to our conversation of me being kind of over Halloween right now yeah. because I feel like I'm forced to, I need to watch these things. It's, well, it's, it's I, I tradition. Think, I think it's even comparable to a certain extent. I think it stems from also being wrestling fans yeah. Where it's like, it's like, I, I'm at this point now where it's like, am I even a wrestling fan? Because I just feel like there's so many other things I would rather be doing than having to watch wrestling Monday through Sunday yeah. to keep up with every major thing that's happening. I, and it's I, like, you know what? I'd rather just listen to what the Codaholic wrestling news is in the morning and if it sounds like they're really raving about a specific match, then I'll like try to track down that match and watch it. But like, I just can't, I can't keep up. And then it's like, you feel like you miss one week. Then it's like, oh, well now I got to like find an extra two hours this week to get caught up on what happened last week before I like, it's just like, it's too much. And there's too many, especially in the WWE front. It's like, there's a pay-per-view every month. Oh there's like all this, like, it's just like, it's, it's like this stops being fun and now it becomes like a job that I Dude, have to be true. doing. Even <laughs> as, as much of a diehard AEW fan as I am, I haven't watched AEW regularly since the Daniel Bryan, Kenny Omega match. Yeah. I haven't watched regularly since then. And it's not on purpose. It's just, it's like you said, I just don't want to dedicate that time. Yeah. So I, I, I do what you do. I, I watch the cultaholic. I, I listen to post wrestling. I, I get my updates from that. And again, it's this, it's this feeling of, oh, I have to do this. Yes. And, and you, <laughs> you stop wanting to do it because yeah. you have to do it. You're like, I'm such a fan. I need to watch this. I eventually broke that habit with the WWE front. Cause yeah. I was a raw watch. I watched raw Every single Monday, it didn't matter. Like, yeah, you like I, I used to leave events that yeah. I was at to be like, "Oop, it's almost eight o'clock. Got to, yep. got to get home. Don't want to miss something big." Yeah. Spoiler alert: Very rarely did anything big ever happen. It was like oh. once every year there'd be like a big moment, but like exactly. Otherwise, it was the same old shit. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. I guess like here's here's the dirty little secret, the awful truth. If they announced that they were done showing Charlie Brown Christmas and they just went maybe even three years where it didn't air, I feel like I'd suddenly become like the biggest Charlie Brown Christmas. You would be fan. so sad. You, you know what I mean? Like so sad. Yeah, like I'd suddenly be like, oh great. Now I can just watch it when I want to. And then I'd be like, well, now I really want to. <laughs> like, so that's the difference between things that you you dislike and things that you've just grown tired of because yeah. if somebody came up to me and said, Hey, we're never ever going to show Michael Keaton's Jack Frost, or we're never ever going to show Jim Carrey's the Grinch who stole Christmas again. I'm not going to be upset. No, but <laughs> let me, 
<laughs> but let me ask you this then. Yeah. Um, to bounce it back to something else. Yes. Let's say Freeform loses the rights to air Hocus Pocus. And I don't have a Blu-ray copy of it. And you don't. Well, <laughs> well, no, but I'm saying like now suddenly only you decide when you want to watch Hocus Pocus. Yeah. <laughs> How many years before you're like, all right, I think I'm going to put on Hocus Pocus. I, I would honestly probably do it as soon as they announced it. <laughs> Because, but, because, because, because it's the, we are those people. Like, but it's the principle. Totally those I get people. it. It's the principle yeah. of of come on now. I would love for more channels to. I don't even think I would have an issue with Hocus Pocus if they also worked in other things. Yeah. Freeform got down to a point where it's been Adam's Family, Hocus Pocus, Beetlejuice. Adam's Family, Hocus Pocus, Beetlejuice. And and listen, Freeform. Don't make me hate Beetlejuice. Like, Dude, don't fucking steal that from we me. We were talking about that the other night where it's like, <laughs> it used to be hard to find Beetlejuice merch. And now that shit is everywhere. Beetlejuice yeah. is everywhere. Beetlejuice has become the new Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, I would say yes and no. Yeah. Um, I, I think I think that right now it's having its nice little renaissance. Yeah. But I don't think... I don't think Beetlejuice has will stay, ever has fully staying dis- power. Yeah, not that it doesn't have the staying power, but I feel like I feel like it, Beetlejuice is kind of similar to Clue. Like I feel like Clue goes through these waves where there's like there'll be like a year where everyone's just like, "Yo, you know what my favorite Tim Carey performance is?" Clue. <laughs> but, like, but then there'll be like four years where nobody's talking about the movie Clue, yeah. and then you're just like, "Oh, cool! I can just kind of like enjoy Clue without it being like." the thing that everyone's posting about on the internet. And then like, you know, four or five years go by and then everybody's like, Hey, who remembers clue? Only real nineties kids do hashtag nostalgia. (laughs) (laughs) So I think the, the, the main point I was getting at is it's like the whole AMC playing like the Halloween movies thing, right? You and I own multiple copies of all of these movies but it's nice to know that they're playing on TV. Even it's if nice. I don't have USA or AMC or any of those channels, it's nice to know that it's an option for somebody. Yeah, it is. Because that's how and I discovered most of that stuff was as a yep. kid flipping through the channels and being like, oh, Jason goes to hell. This should be good. We got to a point where everything is so instant that we don't have to have those things anymore. And it kind of makes me sad because, you know, like you just said, hashtag nostalgia. But for some things, it goes a little too far. And that's yeah. my point when it comes to Freeform and Hocus Pocus. Because I did used to love Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus was amazing. It was like that Halloween movie that I would sit down with my family and watch. And we'd watch it once. And then, cool, let's put it back in the VHS. Well, the thing with Hocus Pocus is also like, that is very much a film that was revitalized by the internet yeah. because like that movie tanked at the box. Yeah. Office. Like it did bad. So it was kind of like similarly to when you watch like the monster squad, Wolfman's got Nards doc where they yep. talk about how like unbeknownst to all of these people, kids were finding this movie and thinking that they were the only person finding that movie. Yeah. Right. And then like, 15 years later, the internet pops up and then it's like, oh, you also knew of this movie? And it was like, I think Hocus Pocus kind of had an aspect of that where it was like, because that movie did so terribly at the box office, everyone just thought that they were the only person that knew of Hocus Pocus for a while. Yeah. And then like the internet rolls around and then you find out that everybody has felt that way about Hocus Pocus. And then there's this community of fans, but then just like anything else, be it a Rick and Morty fan or a Juggalo or anything else, too many people liking the same thing gets exhausting. It does. <laughs> like, it really does get exhausting. And now that I'm thinking about it, and I, I brought this up on Jersey Ghouls as well, that Hocus Pocus to me, I don't think Freeform did it anymore, but they took a couple years where they tried to make Hocus Pocus, the Christmas story, but for Halloween, where Mm -hmm. they played it for 24 hours the day of Halloween. And I love putting a Christmas story on and just letting it play throughout the day. 
Now, I wonder if I wouldn't have such a problem with it if the Hocus Pocus being on 24 hours a day on Halloween, if that was something that was going on while I was a kid. No, here's well. here's the big difference. Okay. A Christmas story feels like sketch comedy. Yeah. In the sense of, yes, is it a plot? Like, yes, the, the movie <laughs> there has is a, a plot. semblance of a plot. In there. There's a plot, yes. but but it it honestly just feels like individual segments that could be because I've said this before. I only sat down and watched that movie from front to back for the first time, maybe five years ago. Yeah. But I had seen the whole movie, but like it didn't matter. Like I could piece the, the movie together just yeah. from the fact that like all of these things are little disconnected pieces of a story like it's kind of similar to like you could sit down and you could watch freaks and geeks in the order that the production order is yeah or you could have someone shuffle those episodes and you could watch them completely out of order and i feel like very little of connective tissue would be lost except for like one or two tiny plot points yeah you could still piece it together for sure because it's more of just like here are individual snapshots of these kids lives during this particular time in their life yeah so i i think that christmas story works because you aren't following a beat for beat plot like that like yeah I can't say the same for Hocus Pocus. If you were going to do like a, oh, we're going to play this movie 24 hours, it would honestly have to be like a creep show or like a trick or treat or like something that's an anthology film yeah. where you can just catch it in pieces. There we go. 24, 24 hours of pieces on how. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> perfect. That's what they need. Um, Dylan, real quick before we wrap up this episode, I do, I mean, first of all, congratulations. You won the great debate and I will never besmirch the name of Charlie Brown, <laughs> Charlie Christmas Brown again. ever again. Um, but do we have, it's been a, uh, we're almost at a full year. Do you have any favorite moments of this first year of doing uh, Christmas 365? My favorite, some of my favorite moments of doing Christmas 365 relates a lot to the conversation we just had. I love when we get into the Emmett Otter Charlie Brown Christmas <laughs> debates because it happens so often. Like, well, I mean, RIP, we'll never have that conversation show. again. I know, we're <laughs> never going to talk about that again. We're putting it to rest. Insert a uh, gunshot sound effect here. Bang. <laughs> it's come on. I think some of my other favorite moments. I love discovery. I love some of the things I've discovered through recording Christmas 365 from the first episode, Let It Snow. I can't wait yeah. to watch that this year to last Christmas and, and recording that with you guys and talking about that on the live stream was absolutely amazing. It just it doing this weekly with you. It fills my heart with joy, man. Aww. And and that's that's what I love about the Christmas season. What I love about the holiday is even during those days where we're both super busy and we can both tell neither one of us feels like recording, when we sit down and we have these conversations, they just they they warm my heart. And even when we don't stay on topic, which is 95% well, of the time. I was going to say, so many, so many times we're like, all right, we only got an hour and we're trying to knock out two episodes. Yep. I mean, I'm not passionate about this. You're not passionate about this. Let's just do a quick 20 minute episode. And then it's like 55 minutes later, we still mm -hmm. haven't finished the first episode that we <laughs> yeah. sat down to record. So it's just like, all right. And that's the thing. Like, like we're just, for the people listening, we're just two guys that really love Christmas and we use this time to not only talk about the things we love about the holiday, but also you kind of get a glimpse into our lives as we catch up because a lot of those times is just us catching up. I mean, you guys didn't get to hear this. It was edited out, but that black Xmas episode was almost an hour long before it was edited. Yeah. Out. And, we, and I was like, I don't know if people really need to hear us <laughs> catching up on <laughs> horror stuff necessarily, but yeah, but yeah, no, there's a lot that ends up on the cutting room floor. It's weird to say it like this. But obviously, over the last two years, I feel like I've found that a lot of my most meaningful ways to connect with other people is doing podcasts. With yeah. Them. Don't get me wrong. I also love that I have friends locally that have nothing to do with podcasting that I can just <laughs> like sit and hang out with and be like a normal human around. Yeah. But like there is this really beautiful bond of like literally having weekly conversations <laughs> with the same person 
over and over and over again because I wouldn't say that we weren't friends, but yeah. like our interactions were we would see each other at the horror cons and occasionally comment on each other's Facebook stuff. Yep. And now it's like, dude, I'm texting you almost every day. Yep. <laughs> like, yep. We're chatting you know, every like, day and it and it and we just continue to grow closer. I can honestly say, like, through the birth of this podcast, you've become one of my best friends. And I love you for that, man. I'm, I, I'm I, gunning for best man at next wedding. That's the, <laughs> that's the goal. At next wedding. I love it. Dude, <laughs> Christmas 365. I We've got a ton left in the tank. And I no, can't we wait. got about 350 more episodes exactly. to go. I, I can't wait to see what we get into. Because if you look back at our first 50 episodes, we haven't hit many or we haven't touched on many heavy hitters yet. You know, I, I don't think that there's anything else to say, but... Happy 50 episodes, Dylan. Happy 50 episodes, Matt. Oh, whoa, oh, 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 now we won't stop till the big ball drops on New Year's. Happy, happy holiday, have a great, great, great holiday, have a merry, 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 happy holiday. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.